bright duty. Every student matters. Then stupas. In this, the construction of the stupas, chatyas are also been made. Certain places were regarded as sacred by the people in the early times. Sites with special trees or unique rocks or sites of inspiring natural beauty with small shrines attached to them were known as chatyas. This is the definition of the chatyas in Buddhist texts. So what is that? This place is actually regarded as a sacred place. By the people in early times, they were calling it Chatyas. Then Ajanta Chatya. This is the cave of Ajanta. Where the entire, this, the pillars and these sculptures, the miniature paintings, all these are related to the Buddha's life. His life in a form of a story is depicted over here. Then four sacred places for life of Buddhas. Buddhist literature describes places connected to the life of Buddha. What are they? This is the Lumini where he was born. Bodhgaya where he attained enlightenment. Sarnath where he gave his first sermon. Then Kushinagar where he attained Nibbana. Nibbana means that the means salvation. He left his life, he died. These four places were considered as sacred place for life of Buddha and for Buddha's life. Now coming to discuss about stupas. What were stupas? Mounts were relics of the Buddha, such as his bodily remains. Relics means that the, any part of the body or objects used by him were buried, were known as stupas. It's a mound-like structure. This is like a structure and inside this, the relics of Buddha. Relics means any of the bodily remains or the objects which was used by him during his lifetime is kept inside, engraved inside. And this mound-like structure is known as stupa. It is known as, known that Asoka distributed portions of Buddha's relics to every important town and ordered the construction of his stupas over there. This is, it is known as, the fact is not available, but it is said like that. This was the work done by King Asoka. And what he did, he has just distributed all his relics, either objects or his, the part of his body, to construct the stupas in different parts of the country. The stupa at Barhut, Sachi, Sarnath, were built by the 2nd century BC. Inscriptions found on the railings and the pillars of the stupas give, give idea about the donations given by the king who has contributed for the construction of the stupas. These, the facts and the important facts, we are getting it from the inscriptions which has been written on the railings and the pillars of the stupas about the donations of by the kings and the guilds means that the merchant organization group of merchants bhikkhus, bhikkhunis and ordinary men and women for building and decorating these monuments. So this is all the work done by with the initiative of King Asoka. Structure of stupa Stupa is actually a Sanskrit word, which means heap. The structure of stupa originated as a simple circular mound of earth called anda. Mound of earth. It is called anda. Gradually, it developed into a more complex structure. Might be with that, the improvement and development in the architecture. architecture 
this has been developed in a more complex way above the under was the harmika a balcony like structure that represented the abode means the residence of the gods arising from the harmika was the mast called the yasti surrounded by a chhatri or an umbrella so all these are the different languages which is used but the architectural planning was done in such manner above the anda the harmika was there harmika is what it's a balcony like structure so and which represented the abode the residence of the gods and the goddesses and arising this harmika there was a mast called yasti surrounded by the chhatri chhatri means an umbrella to protect it from the mist the lights the heat and the unnecessarily the speed of the mound was a railing separating the sacred place from the secular world this is the mound was a railing separating the sacred space from the secular world so there is a means the railing this is the importance of the construction of railing in stupas how the early stupas were created or constructed the early stupas were built at sanchi and barho this is the burhat they were plain except for the stone railings there is a difference in construction also because of that the architectural planning was not developed at that time first and the second century bc only these were constructed which resembled a bamboo or wooden fence and the gateways which were richly carved and installed at the four cardinal points all this the four cardinal points means that north south east and west so these are known as the cardinal points the gateways were been constructed in all the four different directions the mound of the stupas at amravati and shah jahan this is the shah ji dheri in peshawar came to be elaborately carved with sculptures compared to the early stupas at sanchi and parho so this is the difference the early earlier which was been constructed at sanchi and barho they were completely different in comparison to amravati and one of the stupa constructed in peshawar with the name shah ji dheri shah ji dheri is also different there is no comparison between this sanchi and barho stupas this is the structure of sanchi stupa it is in madhya pradesh then the fate of amravati the mahachatya at amravati is now just an insignificant little mound totally denuded of its former mood means now it is completely eroded so this that the simple way or simple simply we can say that it has not been protected and it has not been taken proper in 1796 the local raja stumbled upon the ruins of the stupas at amravati using it its stone to build a temple this is the reason behind it for the denudation of the amravati stupa this the amravatis the stones were stupas of amravati were used for the building of a temple in 1854 at this time we were under the british rule here also we were under the british rule walter eliot the commissioner of guntur guntur is a district in andhra pradesh visited amravati and collected several sculpture panels and took them away to madras this is the another work done by how this site has the stupas of amravati has been ruined once that the local raja he has taken away the stones for the construction of temple second that the walter eliot commissioner of guntur 
he has taken several sculptures from there so sculpture panels he has taken from there taken out from there and he has brought it into the the city of madras in those days madras was the presidency one of the important cities and the trade and the business town for the britishers then colonel colin mackenzie also visited the site but his reports were not published in 1850s some of the slabs from amravati had begun to be taken to different places to the asiatic society of bengal at calcutta to the india office in madras and some even to london this is the main reason why about the denudation of this amravati stupa because their original things are not been left over there many of these sculptures were seen adorning the garden of the british administrators these sculptures were taken by the british officials and they were decorating their gardens this is the amravati stupa now this is the miss uh, one of the archaeologist he has his name is h s kule he has given emphasis about that the preservation of the ancient monuments its importance and why it is necessary and what's the use of this the preservation work he wrote it seems to me a suicidal and indefensible policy to allow the country to be looted of original works of ancient art h s kule has given this statement about this the ancient art and craft of any of the country not only about that the indian art and craft and sculptures what he has he explains about that it seems as suicidal and even not that the defensible policy for any of the country to allow the any of the foreign foreigner to take away that the original art ancient art from that particular country he believed that museum should be should have plaster cast this is the facsimiles of sculptures whereas the original should remain where they had been found the replica what they are telling that the plaster cast means what the replica should be kept in the museum but the original thing should be there remain should remain at their original place wherever they found it should not have be, to be removed from their original place replica can be made and the museum can be decorated not that the original things to be brought to the in a form of a means the original and kept in the museum unfortunately kule did not succeed in convincing the authorities about amravati because what happened this the amravati is that the stones were in the found in the temple then it was in ascetic society of calcutta then in madras as well as in the gardens of the british administrators so whatever the ideas has been given by kule unfortunately it was not succeeded convincing the authorities about amravati although his plea for in c2 in the original place c2 is a word used by him for the original place preservation was adopted in the case of sanchi in the case of sanchi it has been adopted now contribution of begums of bhopal in the preservation of the stupa of sanchi among the best preserved monuments of the times of the time is the stupa at sanchi the begums of bhopal in their contribution in the preservation of the stupa at sanchi two begums shah jahan begum and sultan jahan begum how much they have contributed and taken care for that the preservation of sanchi stupa such things we are coming to discuss in detail under this heading among the best preserved monuments of the time is the stupa at sanchi 
this is the considered this this is considered as the waste stupa or the waste preserved monuments at the time of this sultan jahan and shah jahan begum's period in the 19th century europeans the first french and the later english were interested to take away the stone gateway of the stupa to paris and london museums this was the europeans their mindset was that they can have to take away this the gateway the stone gateway of the stupa in the museum of paris and london shah jahan begum of bhopal took a wise decision to make plaster cast copies of copies to please europeans what she has she has given her idea about that the plaster cards the replica can be prepared with the help of the plaster cards that can be taken by the british officials this resulted in the original remain at the site so this was the contribution of shah jahan begum she has not allowed this europeans to take away the original eastern gateway of stupa and she has given the replica of it which was made up of plaster cast this is about the sanchi stupa this is made like this then the rulers of bhopal shah jahan begum and her successor sultan jahan begum these were the two begums of bhopal they not only preserve but they have contributed the money also provided money for the preservation of the ancient site of sanchi stupa museum was built publication of the volumes of john marshall was founded all such things are founded over there which was preserved with the contribution of both these begums the sanchi stupa as the most important buddhist center has helped the help in the understanding of early buddhism about that the buddhas the previous life or the beginning of the buddhism all such texts are preserved at the sanchi stupa today it stands testimony to the successful restoration of a key archaeological site by the archaeological survey of india asi this is now considered whatever the work and the contribution done by both this the begums of bhopal is now means it is the very much very important and the stands as a testimony to the successful restoration of a key to the archaeological site as this the archaeological sites the and it helps a lot to the archaeological survey of india regarding their excavation and the trying to find out the facts stories in stone now this is very important part of this chapter now we are coming to discuss this the different this the miniature paintings and the sculptures and how these stories are depicted in this uh, sculptures the sculptures at sanchi are scroll of stories scroll means that this way we one can have to study about this by moving one place to another in the same direction which is actually these sculptures are kept or prepared which depict the scenes of from the jataka tales there were stories of visantara jataka where the prince give up everything to the brahmana and goes to live in forest with his wife and children this is the the visantara visantara jataka is actually depicting the life history of a king who has of a prince actually who has given up everything donated everything to a brahman and he left his palace along with his wife and children and moved towards the forest so this is the entire story is been framed in a form of a sculpture and depict the stories symbols of worship this is the wood wheel the early sculpture does not have the image of buddha image of buddha is the in the latter period it has been started creating by the uh, art and craft people artists they have started creating it instead it uses symbols like an empty seat represents meditation 
if suppose that in this culture empty seat has been sown this means that buddha is in the meditation and stupa represented the mahapari nibbana mahapari nibbana means that he has left this world and after getting enlightenment he has just got his salvation so there was the use of wheel which stood for the first sermon delivered by buddha at sarnath so this is the importance of wheel in this sculpture which the it depicts about the first sermon sermon which has been delivered by lord buddha after getting his enlightenment at the age of 35 at sarnath near varanasi or banaras in present day uttar pradesh it is obvious such sculptures cannot be understood literally means that it depends to understand the literature by seeing this sculptures it's very difficult for example the image of a tree does not stand simply for a tree but symbolizes an event in the life of buddha here means that if suppose the tree is been depicted in the sculpture what is the importance of tree in buddha's life because he was meditated under the peepal tree so it symbolizes that buddha got his enlightenment under this tree while he was sitting for meditation in search of knowledge hence historians have to familiarize themselves with the traditions of those who produce these works of art to understand such symbols now how difficult it was historians to familiarize themselves about the traditions of those those people who they were involved in the construction work who they were involved in that the making of the sculptures so by correlating it the historians they try to understand the traditions of those the persons who they were involved in the making of these sculptures and the art to understand the meaning of such symbols some other sculptures at sanchi were not directly inspired by buddhist ideas even though many of the sculptures are also been found over there at the stupa sanchi in that campus in their premises but that is not related and that did not inspire these historians and they did not find the fact or clue about that anyhow it is related to the life of buddha these include beautiful women known as sala bhanjika swinging from the edge of the gateway holding on to a tree so this is the best quoted example historians they are not means able to familiarize with this symbol and to depict in the means context of the lifestyle of buddha so this is a woman this is the sala bhanjika she was just holding on to a tree and she was swinging over there according to popular belief the mere touching of the tree by her would make the tree to flower and bear fruit but what is the popular belief about this the sala bhanjika what it says about that it says that the woman moment she has touched that tree the tree the tree has started getting flower and it the tree has bore the fruit so this is this way the in the another story it is depicting about that the image of sala banjika so this is the tree she is just swinging with the holding one of the branch of this tree so many people who they turn to buddhism enriched it with their own pre buddhist and even non buddhist belief practices and ideas this is about that the image of sala banjika this has been constructed in one of the gateway and this is the means the view and the image it has been focused only on the image of sala banjika many animals were also carved to create lively scenes to attract viewers many of that sculptures has been also created for the attraction point of view to attract the viewers 
For example, elephant was carved, which signified strength and wisdom. This is the importance of elephant, which has been carved out and it is been placed in one of the gateway or the main shrine. Another figure found at Sachi Stupa is that of Maya, the mother of Lord Buddha, or popular goddess Gaza Lakshmi. Means that one mother figure is also been made by this. The artist they have prepared this or created this the mother figure. So some of them they have correlated it as it is uh, created in Sanchi Stupa in that premises. So they have correlated this figure with the Lord Buddha's mother Maya. And the, they have also been given their relationship with that the goddess Gaja Lakshmi. Goddess Lakshmi with the two elephants from both her sides. The figure of a serpent was found at Sanchi. Serpent figure was also found. James Ferguson, James Ferguson, a modern art historian, he considered Sanchi as the center of tree and serpent worship. He is uh, James Ferguson, he was a modern art historian. He is having ability to study the art, correlate the history with the art. So what he found, what he considered about that, the Sanchi stupa, where he found a serpent figure, Sanchi as the center of the tree and the serpent was worshipped. This is the symbol of worship. This is the image taken from the Sarnath Buddha and this is the Dharma Chakra Mudra. This is Lord Mahavira. And this is about that, the stupa worship. Mahavir at Sravana Balgola. Sravana Balgola, it is a very much very important and the famous that the ritual and the ceremony is organized in southern India. Image of Sarnath, Lord Buddha's image has been created and now the city is very much very decorated by the Buddhist followers. After this, it comes about that the new religious traditions. Just now we have discussed, while we were discussing about that, the 24th Tirthankar, Vardhaman Mahavira, after his death, his followers has divided this Jainism also into two different sects, Digambar and Swetambar. Orthodox, there were the difference were created between the followers in the northern India and the Southern India. One, they have orthodox that the traditional belief of Jain text consider themselves as Digambar and they are keeping themselves in naked form, in a nature, in a natural form of human life. Swetambaras, they are wearing the white cloth. In the same way, this Buddhism also has been divided into two different categories, Mahayan and Hinaya. So the development of the Mahayan Buddhism, how this the concept has been developed. By the first century CE, there were changes in Buddhist ideas and practices. Change is the, means the requirement of the time. So the same way Jainism also has been changed and divided. The same manner, Buddhism also has changed its the original concept and its ideas and the practices. Early Buddhist teachings had given great importance to self-effort in achieving Nibbana or Nirvana. Buddha was regarded as a human being. The idea of Buddha as a savior emerged. Here, what is this? The concept according to the Mahayana, this viewers, the Buddhism, according to Mahayana Buddhism, Buddha is regarded as a human being and his ideas as a savior has been emerged. This is the concept of Mahayana. It was believed that he is the one who could ensure salvation. This is the another belief which the Mahayana people and the 
Mahayana Buddhists, they follow this. Simultaneously, the cons concept of the Bodhisattva also developed. Bodhisattva. Now, what is the Bodhisattva? They were seen as deeply compassionate or the sympathetic beings that could help others to attain Nirvana. This is now the meaning of Bodhisattva. Bodhisattva were perceived or they were seen. They have a sympathy that could help others to attain Nirvana. The worship of the image of the Buddha and Bodhisattvas became an important part of this tradition. With tradition, Mahayana Buddhism. Images of Lord Buddha as well as the Bodhisattvas. Who they are helping others to get salvation. They were known as Bodhisattvas. And they were considered as a part of the Mahayana. This new way of thinking was called Mahayana, literally the greater vehicle. Greater vehicle and lesser vehicle. Now, the two vehicles are there. Vehicles means when we use our vehicle, when we try to move from one place to another. So, here vehicle means that the one world to the another. The followers of Mahayana Buddhism describe the older tradition of Hinayana or that is as lesser wicked. Growth of Puranic Hinduism. There were two important traditions that developed within Puranic Hinduism. In the Purans, there are 18 numbers of Ashtadesu Puranesu. Vyasasya vachanam dev, paropkaraya purnayaya papaya padapidanam. This is the very important hymn or sloka given in Puran. Ashtadesu means that 18 Purans are there, 16 stories are there. Puran, Puranic Hinduism or the Puran is divided into the 18 parts. So it is Ashtadesu Puranesu, Vyasasya vachanam dvai. Parupkaraya Purnyaya Papaya Padapidanam. By doing the goods, you may free from the recycle, it's from the cycle of rebirth. To attain the nibbana, to attain the salvation. This is the right way, right direction. So, according to this, the Puranic Hinduism, Vaishnavism is a form of Hinduism. This is Vaishnavism. It is a form of Hinduism with, in which Vishnu was worshipped as the principal deity. With the name only, Vaishnavism means the followers of the Lord Vishnu. Means that this, the group of Hindus, they are considering Lord Vishnu as a principal deity. In the case of Vaishnavism cult, were developed around the various avatars or incarnations of Lord Vishnu. In Bhagavad Gita also it has been explained, Lord Krishna is the incarnation of Lord Vishnu. So in this Puranic traditions, Puranic Hinduism also, it has been declared and it has been developed that Vishnu has the lots of the incarnation avatars. According to Vaishnavism, there are 10 avatars of Vishnu. Dasavatar, what it is known as Dasavatar. Dasavatar of Lord Vishnu. In that Lord Krishna is also there. Avatars were forms that the deity was believed to have assumed in order to save the world whenever it was threatened by evil forces. So it is said that these avatars or the incarnation of the God, when they come to the earth, whenever the earth is threatened or the evil forces, they are controlling the power. In that case, these gods, they, this Lord Vishnu, in a different form, in different avatars, he appeared on the earth to protect the 
so this different avatars were popular in different parts of the country this is the incarnation of lord vishnu here at the center this is the lord vishnu this is krishna ram avatar parshuram vaman then this is the vara so this way lord buddha is also considered one of them so this is all about the avatars of lord vishnu all these the 10 the avatars are there the avatar first is matsya matsya means that the fish so this one is the mats then sri ram rama is also there where it is this is the rama kurma avatar second is about that the kurma which, which is the kurma kurma is a sanskrit word which means that tortoise so you must have to find it out where is the tortoise in this figure this is the tortoise then it comes vara vara means that the deer vara avatar after that narsimha means that half of the portion is of the god and half is of the demon vamana avatar after that balram balram is also parshuram balram then shri ram and the shri krishna and the last one is the kalki avatar so this is all about that the different incarnation of lord vishnu this is after this the vaishnavism we are coming to discuss about the shaivism in a tradition in this shaivism tradition lord shiva is regarded as the chief god or the main deity or the principal deity shiva was symbolized by the linga linga in a form of a linga we all we used to worship lord shiva although he was occasionally represented in the form of human figure too many a times in the human figure also we uh, this lord shiva has been represented by the artist some of these deities were represented in sculptures all such representations depict a complex set of ideas about the deities now all such representations about this the ideas of the deities are very complex it's very difficult to understand to understand the meaning of these sculptures historians have to be familiar with the puranas they must have to know about that what description is about is given in the purans about that the different images of the lord different images of the gods and the goddesses according to this puranas contained stories about gods and goddesses they were written in simple sanskrit and were meant to be read aloud to every body why to be read aloud because in those days the people were not literate so everyone can understand about the concept of the gods and the goddesses and their different forms their different avatars purans evolved through interaction amongst people priests merchants and ordinary men and women who traveled from place to place sharing ideas and beliefs this is about the evolution of the puran interaction among the people and the priest how they are interacted with each other interaction with the merchants about the ordinary men women their travel from one place to another how they were sharing their ideas their beliefs everything is been written in purans for example vasudev krishna was an important deity in the mathura region vasudev and vasudev vasudev krishna vasudev his father so this is the krishna is been quoted in the region of mathura he because he is very famous over there so in that form to understand the different incarnation of avatar of lord vishnu we must have to know about that the role played by krishna and the place where he was ruling the king from that region 
over centuries his worship is spread to other parts of the countries as well but he is not only confined with mathura but the other parts of the country also he has been started praised worship by the people this is about that the lord vishnu then shiva and brahman brahma growth of temple architecture architectural planning and their importance and how they have developed with the stupas at sites such as sachi were taking their present form at the same same time their present form is different it is not compared to the earlier form when it was developed in the same manner same time the first temples to house images of gods and goddesses were also being built not only that the stupas but the house which is also known as the temple were also built the early temple was a small square room called the garbhagriha in most of the south india if you visit over there in every that the last temple premises huge temple structures are there and in that huge structure one garbh grih is been constructed so what from where this the concept of garbh grih is there in the olden times the early temples the small square room has been constructed and that a square a small square room were called garbh grih with a single doorway for the worshippers to enter and offer worship to the images wherever you visit to tirupati you visit to this uh, a minakshi temple you may get brihadeswara temple everywhere only one that the gateway is there entry is only one there is no exit point so this was the construction and the architectural planning was done in the early times gradually a tall structure known as shikhara was built over the central shrine central shrine means that the garb grey then the huge that the shrine like structure has been constructed and that is known as the shikhar means that the mountain like structure the top the temple walls were often decorated with sculpture the entire wall the olden temples if you visit over there you may get that it is decorated with the small and the big sculptures which has been created by the architecture or by the art producers by the artists assembly halls huge walls gateways and the arrangements for supplying water made the later temples far more elaborated these are the gradual development architectural development gradually first that the small shrine like structure garbhagri has been created after that the shikhar was been created then assembly halls were to sit for the prayer not inside the garbhagri because it's a very small structure huge walls gateways means the entries then arrangements for supplying water how to supply the water to this temple premises everything has been started done being constructed one of the unique feature of early temples was that some of these were hollowed out of huge rocks as artificial caves this is now with the artificial cave creation is also been done so that way this the uh, architecture the artist their ideas were there and on that basis of those ideas they are creating and they are constructing the temples an amazing example of the carving out of an entire temple from a cave is that kalasna temple at elora in maharashtra this is the carving out of an entire temple from a cave kalasna temple is an exceptional example which is situated at elora it is in maharashtra state so this is the amazing work and the examples of the creation of the artist this is the kalasna temple it is said that the one rock is only been cut and all this the construction has been done and when it was 756 to 774 ad 
this time period was taken to construct to complete this work. This is Barabar cave. This is also the same example quoted over here, given over here. Now, the problems faced by European scholars while studying the sculptures, even though the hist Indian historians also, while they are trying to understand, to correlate the sculptures, which they found on the temple walls, in stupas, so to collect those ideas, to correlate these sculptures, paintings and the uh, artist work, they have to read the Purans, they have to read the Vedas, then they are supposed to correlate it the fact. The same way, the firstly, the Europeans, the European scholars were not familiar with the local traditions and beliefs. They were not knowing about that, on what beliefs these the local traditions were followed by the people. So they were horrified by the images of half human and half animals. Nar Simha Avtar. Nar means that the human and the animal, both in the same. In the same way, they say Lord Shiva is half woman and the half men. So that way, this, the European scholars, they were horrified by seeing such type of the images, half human and half animals. They considered the Indian sculptures inferior to that of the European sculptures from Greece with which they were familiar. Greece sculpture were very familiar to the Europeans and on that basis they have started correlating India's sculpture is inferior. This was because they compared the Indian sculpture to the images of Greece with which they were very much very familiar. This was the first reason. Second is about that the art historians use textual traditions to understand the meaning of sculptures. Now, this to, how to understand? They have to started reading about that, the traditional tapes, to understand the meaning of the sculpture. Why? This is a better strategy than comparing the images found in India with that of the Greece. Now, while they have started understanding the, the traditional text, then they found then how this the images of India cannot be compared with the images what they studied in Greece. For example, to identify this sculpture along a huge rock in Mahabalipuram, it is in Tamil Nadu. And historians have to search through the Puranas. So Mahabalipuram, it is nearby Chennai. There it has been, this uh, elephants are been constructed over there. The huge stones were been cut and given the different shapes and the images of the different temples. So this way, these sculptures along with the huge rock in Mahabalipuram, the art historians have to search through this, the Puranas. All these, the descriptions, these temples, their history, their story is been... The theme of this Mahabalipuram temples is written in the Purans. And according to the Puranic tradition, Puranic story, this Maha temple of this Mahabalipuram has been constructed. This is the image of the Mahabalipuram temple, a huge elephant like structure, then the miniature sculptures are there. So, this is all about your this chapter of the thinkers' beliefs. And the spot is of Sachi Stupa. We have discussed inside this chapter with that the facts and the construction and the architectural planning of the Indian temples, the different sculptures which has been found by the different historians at the different sites and their correlation with the religious text has been developed over here. We have just discussed now. So that lastly, we must remember that many rituals, religious beliefs and practices were not depicted in the sculptures and the paintings. These included daily practices as well as those depicting special occasions. Many of these the temples which are constructed over here under this architectural planning and the artists, they have developed their ideas related to the day-to-day -day life. It is not always this, uh, the religious text can give us all the ideas about the 
creation of these sculptures. People might not have left and might not have felt the need of keeping lasting records in the forms of sculptures and paintings. But in those days, the people, they were not interested to keep all the records of these sculptures and the paintings which has been carved out on these walls of the temples. So, they are not interested and not been maintained. Some of the key words of this chapter is very much very important also given over here. Hagiography is a biography of a saint or religious leader. Then Theravadians. This is Theravadians, the followers of the older tradition of Buddhism. Kinyana and the Minyan, a Mahayan, the greater vehicle and the lesser vehicle. Three Pitaka, which literally means the three baskets. These were Buddhist texts, namely Sutta Pitaka, Vinaya Pitaka and Avidhamma Pitaka. These are the three baskets of the Buddhist text or the Buddhist literature. Chatya, we have already discussed in the inside the slide also. Here again telling you about this. The Chatya may also been derived from the word Chitta, which meaning funeral pyre and by extension a fun funerary mound has been created. So it's a simple Hindi or Sanskrit word, we can say that Chatya means that it is a word derived from Chita, which means the funeral pyre and by extension of a funerary 